Okay, it's time for round two of the February 2014 20-sided tournament. And because round two, the games were not ridiculously... Well, the first game was not ridiculously long as it was in round one. We're just going to put round two all in one video. Much better that way. Two games, one video... Maybe I'll put a little time code in the comments so you can skip to game two easily. Uh, yep, this is at the 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York. Um, it's round two. In round one, I split. Runners won. I'm running first here against Ye old Jinteki. Ye old Jinteki. Okay, so basically what I'm worried about here is I've got to find a Sentry Breaker. Uh, and Because right, I'm running a Parasite Recursion deck, right? So it's hard to install a Parasite in something that's not rezzed. So I e either need a way to bring out the Parasite's mid-run, right, while I'm running. Phew, goodbye, Neural Katana. Or I need to get the I run, take the hit from the ice, get it rezzed, then install Parasites on it. Um, the thing is, if you look at my starting hand, I couldn't throw the starting hand away. I think I drew all three parasites in that starting hand. <laughs> it was so ridiculous. Yeah, three parasites and a data sucker, uh, and a clone ship, and then I just top decked it indexing. So I just couldn't throw that away. Um, but also, I can't run. I don't want to take a neural katana and lose everything. But it's it's too good to not keep. I, I don't know. It was it was a tough call. So I'm going to be a little skittish running early. Normally I just be like, okay, run, lose three cards, Neural Katana, worst case, right? Uh, and that costs the court four credits, fine. They're never going to hit with it again. And then, you know, whatever. So I'm going to install the clone chip, so at least no matter what happens, maybe he scores a clone retirement, right? Um, I will get to pull something back right away. I could have just thrown a Parasite in the garbage and run if I really had to. That's, you know, one turn, throw the Parasite away. Next turn, run, clone ship, right? Archives is still empty. You saw I dirty laundry the archives to get some data, a data sucker and some credits. Uh, as soon as he puts down a face down card in archives, uh, I know it's going to be shock because that's how things go these days. Uh, I have to assume it's shock. So my archive running days will be over. At least, not going to run archives just to collect data suckers, right? Um, it's not a data sucker is not worth a net damage. Data sucker virus token. Okay, so I got the same old thing and whatever. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting the same old thing clone ship, right? So in case I take net damage, I'll be able to bring back an event, bring back the program that I need, right? Anything that gets stuff out of the trash is, you know, I can't have that be the thing that gets net damage, right? I have to have. You know, something that can be brought back, be net damaged. Arranging my cards as the book says to. He's got something advanced twice behind an ice. Um, I mean, I guess I, he can't double Ronin me, so I, and he has no points. So at this point, I just sort of have to let it go. I'll get a second data sucker. Just to increase the efficiency. Not that Jinteki Ice are particularly strong, um, but that'll probably save me a bunch of clicks. Um, just to have two of them. And because I know Jinteki Ice are not strong, I know I'm not going to really need, or at least I shouldn't need, uh, a lot of the other cards that I have. Just parasite them all to death once they're rezzed. So I'm going to infiltrate that. I drew one, luckily. Uh, a fetal AI. Okay, so uh, I'm going to, if you want to score that fetal AI, be my guest. <laughs> I will gladly take one damage instead of three. Um, so I'm making, I'm just drawing lots and lots of cards. Uh, and you see now I have test run and scavenge. So um, I'm going to bring out a fem probably with that as soon as I get a chance for free. And I've got tons of money here because he hasn't been pressuring me at all. Look, as I've already built up all this stuff. 
and drawn all these cards. He hasn't scored anything. So that indexing got thrown out there because I, I have the same old thing, so I can I can safely put indexing in the trash. Um, uh, yeah, so he hasn't pressured me at all. So I'm just sitting here collecting a ton of cash. I'm going to test run Scavenger Femme, and then I'll be able to run wherever I want, right? Uh, no problem, no fear whatsoever. Ding. Once you have a Sentry Breaker, even a Mimic, uh, you can just run on Jinteki like crazy. So, I mean, even in this situation, if I had drawn that Femme, I could have just installed it. So, yep. So I said it on the back ice and R&D. I think, you know, my logic is that the back ice is the one that's going to stop you, right? But I think from now on I'm going to do the front ice because I've been in too many situations, especially against Jinteki, right? Where the front ice is the chum. Here, the front ice is the RSVP, so I'm going to jack out after I encounter the RSVP. Right? I gotta start putting the fem token on the front ice. When there's two ice, put the fem token on the front ice. Um, that's the ice they drew later in the game. That's the ice that they had, you know, intentionally placed there. Right? Now, lucky I was test run scavenging that fem. I was able to scavenge it back to the front ice. So maybe, actually, what you want to do is, you know, do exactly what I just did. Put it on the back ice first, run then scavenge it to the front ice. Anyways, he's trick of lights off his fetal, scores a brain trust, be my guest. Kills off a parasite, that's okay. Save me the trouble of throwing one out to use with the clone ship. Okay, daily caster over. Um, gonna drop my grimoire. Gonna draw, back up. In my hand. So it's two nothing. But I'm pretty loaded right now. I got money. I got data suckers. Data suckers also go really well with fem, even if I don't need to use them for parasites. I got parasites. I got a clone chip. I got the same old thing. I got an indexing in the trash. Now is the time to unleash. He's only got three, four, five, six, seven credits. He's throwing out nice on HQ and replacing it with a different one. That's really interesting. Because usually I'm not going to run Jinteki's HQ, assuming it's full of snares. So why maybe he's trying to indicate that he needs to protect it more? Anyway, I'm going to run R&D. Sarugi. Sarugi. Why did he res Sarugi after seeing me throw out a parasite, seeing I have a clone ship on the table? Seeing I have a data sucker, seeing I have a grimoire. He spent six credits on that. That's a lot. And it's dead. It didn't do anything whatsoever. It's toast. Goodbye. And what do I see on top of R&D? A clone retirement. Happy day. Got a bad pub. So now that bad pub plus my femme will just get me through to R&D uh, for absolutely free. And I lose another Parasite. So maybe I should have just run early, gotten hit, um, let the Parasites get trashed. Oh well. I mean, they ended up getting trashed anyway, but it's, it's alright. Yeah, you don't want to res the Tsurugi in that situation. Um, Tsurugi's real, like, Parasite is the ultimate weapon against it. Okay, so now I'm going to run the Fetal, thinking I'm just going to score it. <laughs> get two more points, but no. No, he's got an RSVP in front of it, so it's like, oh, I guess I'm jacking out. I'm not touching a fetal, taking two damage, and not being able to score it. He thinks he's so clever with that RSVP fetal, using that fetal as a as a token, as an advancement bank for his, um, for his tricks of light. Well, I'll run R&D again. There goes my third parasite in the trash. <laughs> But I got another agenda, so it's 2-2. I tied it up with my free R&D runs with Fem plus Bad Pub. I don't even actually need to pay the Bad Pub. Um, but, I mean, if I encounter a Ronin or who knows what I'm going to encounter in R&D, um, I want to trash it. So, run arm. Um, here we go. So, I same old thing indexing to start this turn. 
Now I have two more clicks to pick up anything I see in there. All right, I see that archer there. Uh, I see a celebrity gift. I see a snare. Um, he's poor, so I'm putting the celebrity gift down low. I see an agenda, keeping that on top. Bastion, that's rather annoying. Yep. Archer, it's like, be my guest. Sacrifice your brain trust. Okay, run. Got a profit score, another agenda. Loading up data suckers. And taking a damage. Okay, I got more of those. Three two. And R and D is not well defended whatsoever. Yeah, indexing really hurts Jinteki, right? And now because I know the next card's coming up, right? Uh, I pretty much know what's gonna happen in the game from from here for the next five cards. So he can control the pace of the game by drawing or not drawing, right? If he draws those cards, uh, I have to spring into action. But then again, I can spring into action if he draws those cards, right? Um, you see there, I'm holding another indexing. <laughs> but since he's not drawing them, he's going to basically you know, armor up uh, in the meantime. So while he's armoring up, I don't have anything to do. I'm not going to fall for any of his weird traps without an infiltration or something. So especially when I'm in a, a strong position, why should I risk you know, losing it? So... I'm just going to sit here and also armor up. You want to armor up? I'll armor up as well. And then as soon as you draw that fifth card, going back to your R&D. Yeah, I'm even just taking money. Just really boring turns here. He's spending money. He's only down to two. He scores a veterans program. There goes my bad pub. Damn it. I kind of wanted that. And a net damage. Oh, I lose a Plaskery. So... He sort of, I uh, can't tell. I mean, he's either really good at acting or he's completely telling the truth. He's like, oh, great. You know, he's as if to imply that he's not going to do any meat damage. Um, so he's kind of sad that he hit a worthless card. I think he wasn't doing any meat damage, uh, at least from what I could tell. So. Yeah. Uh, he hit this Plascrete with a net damage, and he's not, you know, he's not doing one of those Jinteki kill decks that people are doing, I guess. I mean, I would, I would have installed that if, <laughs> um, probably in a, the next turn or so. Uh, but by net damage and by basically telling me that he wasn't doing any, maybe his his acting convinced me. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't acting. I mean, he's just. Tell him the truth. Like, damn it. I'm, <laughs> I did a meat damage and I hit a card that's basically, you know, worthless to you and isn't going to do anything against my deck because I don't do any meat damage. Okay, so he's throwing out the RSVP. I don't necessarily agree with that move, right? Because um, basically, as long as you keep that there, I need to keep my femme active, right? Uh, but it would cut, and you're basically, you took away the bad pub, but now I don't need to spend the bad pub. I, I mean, no, the bad pub would still do something, right? But, you know, you could have cost me one credit on every R&D run. Uh, but instead, I don't, that's one credit less I have to spend every R&D run. You've already res the RSVP. It would only cost you one credit once to install something in front of it, right? I mean, I don't know. All right. I'm running R&D. He lets me in. It's a celebrity gift. All right. Now, why did I do that? It's because I remember where I was indexing, getting some data suckers. Maybe I could make him res it. If it's the archer that I saw when I indexed, he has four credits. I think that's perhaps another reason he threw out the RSVP so that he could install the archer if it is an archer, and still have four credits at the end of that turn uh, with which to res it. But he didn't res it that turn. Um, so maybe it's not the archer. If it is, he could have installed it in front and, and had it, he would have had more chances to take credits uh, to have enough to res it if he wasn't planning on resing it that exact turn. Um, 
I think there may have been some confusion there as to whether I took the daily cast that turn. Um, if there's any confusion and, and both players don't remember if it was taken, uh, as the runner, I'm, I'm going to do what's disadvantageous to me, right? I'm just going to leave it there um, and take it later. All right, indexing. So now he's going to res his archer. Maybe he's just waiting for the indexing. Well, there it is. I have a plan for this. I have a sharpshooter, right? The thing with sharpshooter is I don't have a clone chip on the table right now. So if I were to uh, sharpshoot the archer, I'd get in for my indexing. But how would I get through a second time? I guess I could use money plus the fem. Uh, and he wiped virus counters, right? So if he didn't wipe those virus counters, maybe that's why he didn't res the archer. He was waiting for me to... He was waiting to wipe the counters, then res the archer. Because with fem plus data suckers, I was walking through that archer no problem. Uh, so now that they're gone, I brought out a six strength atman. Why did I do that? That's ridiculously expensive. Well, one, because I could afford it. <laughs> Uh, two, I can use it again and again and again, which I'm going to need to if I plan on indexing. And three, uh, it's on R&D, so I'm going to be going there again and again to build up data suckers uh, safely and also get these cards I'm indexing and whatnot. And it'll stay there the whole game. If he tries to raise some other archer somewhere else then it's no problem. So there I go, I took another agenda. He hits another Plaskrete. Uh, he's pretty much told me at this point that he does no meat damage dealing cards. He's upset that, you know, basically that was the best possible luck for me in terms of which card was net damaged. And now I can get into R&D whenever I want for four credits. Or I could even get in for three uh, and let him take two credits. But I definitely don't want to do that. Now here's the situation, right? I actually, now having, I could have used the sharpshooter. I probably would have been better off with it. Uh, no, I wouldn't have because I wouldn't be only get in twice. I needed to get in twice right then with the indexing. But now that I have five points, right? I actually know that there's still a fetal AI on the board, right behind that RSVP. If I can somehow get past the RSVP, then I can... See, I'm doing math to figure out, can I get through the RSVP and still have two credits left to score the fetal, and still have uh, at least two cards in my hand? If I can, I just win the game immediately, because I have five. And he's basically left two points on the table for me to just take whenever I want. He hasn't advanced it again, which is sort of signaling to me that he's using it as a trick of light bank, right? He's signaling to me by not advancing it that he doesn't have another trick of light. He's going to wait, you know, he's also poor, but <laughs> if he had another trick of light and was going to score something, he would advance the fetal, right? If I was playing, I would always keep that fetal advanced at all times uh, to basically... Now I have to, you know, I can't take it slow. I have to assume that he's going to trick of light is, if he tops decks a trick of light. He has an agenda, and if he draws a trick of light, he's going to boom, score. And he, or he has trick of light in his hand, and if he draws an agenda that he can trick of light and score, boom, he'll do it. By not having it advanced already, I know that he cannot do that on the very next turn. So that means on this turn, I can chill. Uh, and I don't have to try to run R&D or HQ to stop that. But again, it's 5-2, to two, so I don't really have to do much of anything. But yeah, also, the fetals were 2 points. If I'm at 5, you need to get that out of there. If I can take it. Right? So, um, he's showing me his hand. Oh yeah, snare and 4 ice. He's just loaded with ice and no money. Now he's got money, though. Um... But yeah, I could just take the fetal and win. He's got to know I can take the fetal and win. I guess he's assuming I can't do it behind the RSVP, but I'm a shaper. I got tricks, yo. I got tricks. Okay. So if you have the fetal always too advanced, and if the runner gets to five points, then score the fetal by triple advancing it on the following turn. Just get it out of there uh, while you still can. All right? See? Here's my tricks. Install a zero-strength admin. Run. Four data suckers and a credit takes care of RSVP. I pay two credits for Fetal, I have three cards in my hand, I take two damage, I score it, and then the game ends before I take the net damage from scoring. 
So what did we learn from this game? At number one, um, there's a reason Jinteki is not competitive. <laughs> Sorry, Jinteki. Uh, two, indexing. I mean, it was just a bad matchup, right? Indexing destroys Jinteki. Parasite really hurts Jinteki uh, once I can get it rolling. But, you know, he had a chance before I had a Sentry Breaker. Don't res a Sarugi against Parasite. Uh, just, just don't res. He spent, you know, he was poor. Yeah, because he spent six credits for nothing. Uh, he could have had those six credits for something else. Just let me run R&D. Maybe it would have gotten snared or something. Who knows? Um, I don't know. Uh, indexing really rocks Jinteki's world. <laughs> the only net damages I took in that game were when he scored or when I scored. I didn't hit a snare. I, I guess the fetal, I guess. I took two more from the fetal. I didn't get shocked. I didn't get uh, neural katana I didn't... Nothing. Uh, and that's that. Let's see what happens in game two. Oh, look how quickly we fast forwarded and suddenly it's game two. Wow, everyone shuffled all their cards and everything. That was that was awesome. I've never seen someone get the second game started so fast. Game two, NBN versus the Professor. The Professor. Okay, install, install, install. Now, if you're the professor, it doesn't matter who you are. You're playing MBN. What if that's an Azure script? You, you don't you sort of have to run that? Even if it's a Sansan, -san, you can trash it turn one with your five credits. Sure, gamble, run it. Um, I don't know. You, you, if there's an unadvanced, I mean, what do you think it's a snare? I mean, I guess he doesn't know what I'm doing, but okay. So he installs a Magnum for all his money, thus eliminating any possibility of. Uh, Oh, uh, I guess he took two and drew two cards. He, he took two with the Magnum and then drew two. So install Magnum, take two, draw two, throw out Fem. See, he didn't run that. Now I've installed something else on top of it and installed an ice in front of it. See, you could have run that. You could have run it, but you wanted to get your Magnum Opus. The other thing, get your Magnum Opus immediately like that. Okay, sure, if, if that's your only economy... And you're the professor, or you, I guess he drew it in his opening hand. I guess you gotta install it. But what if I got like a, a program trashing ice, right? You missed your chance. You know, now roto turrets are on. They're on, man. You know, I've I'm pretty sure I uploaded another video where I had a magnum opus and ran straight into a roto turret. Okay, now he's installing a procon. So he's basically just slowed his re entire game down, uh, spending like 10 credits on just installing stuff. Meanwhile, I'm all set up. I scored a gila hands. I am way ahead you, you can't there's a reason I've, I've, I've taken pro con i mean this whole tournament i had two pro cons in my deck but i never played them because whenever i had them in my hand playing them would set me back five credits which would give the corp an opportunity to score right i give them a huge opening a five credit difference you know runner loses five credits okay and even though it would have i drew a lot of cards i always draw a lot of cards it would have eventually paid for itself um Ice wall. Oh, he's got an SMC, so. And he's got money. Magnum Opus. So it, it took him a few turns to set up, but I squeezed out of Gila hands. He's got his Corroder. Yeah, the setback from installing it. You know, it doesn't profit for a while. Okay, Bernice is out. Trace 7 on Bernice. Yeah, if he ran, that was the Bernice to start with, right? So I guess, you know, it's sort of a, a, a bait to make him run on turn one. It's a Sand Sand, so he, he takes the tag from Bernice. Then he's, it's, is he going to trash what? He's paying three to trash Bernice. Okay. Then he's going to take two and remove the tag. Cool. Yeah, if he stays tagged, uh, Mr. Procon's getting shot in the face. Okay, I got three, four, five. I need eight uh, to make the Sand Sand score that Astro in my hand. He's got a Corroder, so I'm definitely not just putting um, my Astro on the table. <laughs> I am going to uh, draw a card and use my Gila hands. So now I got eight. Draw a card. Astro. He didn't even try to run and make me res anything to go below 8. 
Got three points, got an Astro token. Does not look good for the professor. He has not studied the ways of MBN well. He's got a Magnum. Just take take six and run. The, and he's got a Corroder. Just run and trash the Astro, the Sand Sand. I mean, if they have, you know, it's like I only have one Astro Skip token. It's... No, he's running my hand. There's his agendas in there, but he didn't get them. Oof, that was lucky. Ooh, that was lucky. Oof, he could have easily taken the Astro from my hand. He did not. I'm going to Gila hands and another credit for four total. And throw something out. I think that might have been a closed accounts. Uh, it doesn't look like a closed accounts is going to happen today. taking money with Magnum. Okay, so, you know, in a way, he lost the early game, right, to the Corp uh, by installing a Magnum, installing a Procon. There he goes. Trash that Sand Sand. Good move. But the Magnum Opus, he's winning the long game. It is really tough for me now. Except I was lucky and he didn't steal this Astro script. But at least now I only have one Astro Script token and not two. Oh, but what's that? I have two credits. And there's a Beal in my hand. The game is over next turn. Oh, shit! When he put that on the table, I just about shit my pants. Nerve Agent. He runs HQ. I'm not resin. He sees one. He takes it. There's four cards left in my hand. One is Project Beal. I need to keep the Project Beal. He sees two cards now. One, two, woof, saved, woof. He runs one more time, he's gonna see three out of four cards, one of which is Beal. One, two, three, I win. That's it. That is rough. I had no right to win that right there, at least not immediately. Um, boom, game over. <laughs> yep. That's just, just how Netrunner is. Netrunner is sometimes a bitch. It is nasty. Luck is just on someone's side. <laughs> face palm. I'm face palming for you. I feel you, bro. I feel you. That is that is what happens. That is what happens. Yeah, I'm not resin that caduceus. Uh, I didn't have three credits to do so. Yeah, that's just... That is just super rough right there. Super rough. I mean, you, you should have stolen that Beal. Um, man. You know, I could I would have drawn probably into an agenda sometime soon. I would have had money because Gila hands. There's a Beal coming up. You know. Um, but yeah. I mean, he had... He probably would have had four. It would, it would have been close. Had he stolen that Beal, it would, it would have been close. The Magnum, uh, you know, keeps him rolling. Um, my Sand Sam was gone. I don't know. Probably maybe wouldn't install the Procon if he was a little bit faster, right? Like one, you know, maybe that's the Procon did it. Just one turn faster. Man, I, I was, when he put that nerve agent down, I was like, shit, oh no. I was, I, I thought I was going to lose it right there. But yeah, Gods of Luck smiled upon me. That was that was definitely the right move with the Nerve Agent. Play MVN and things like this will happen to you.